Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and, "My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him?" The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice, so you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing: the wolf's feet are black, and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one. And headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out, "You're not our mother." Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop. Bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer, so he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time, the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, "Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door." Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door, "We will not open the door for you! Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf." As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First, show us your feet, so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats. Did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. <laughs> one of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! Arr. Arr. 
the only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, mother goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away. And then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, mama, we love you. They were all full of joy. Ah, oh, my little goats, you're safe. Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! Yippee! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee! And 
in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. Once upon a time, there lived three piglets with their mother in a small house. It was time for them to leave their home and learn to live on their own. Their mother called the three piglets next to her. My dear children, the time has come for you to go out into the world. Go and start your new lives. But don't ever forget, whatever you do in this world, do the best you can. This is the only and the best way to stay alive. A little sad with a bit of excitement, the three little piglets said their goodbyes to their mummy and were on their way. After a while, they found some piece of land where they could build their own home. The youngest piglet was determined to build his home with straw. He thought this was the easiest and the fastest way to build a home. That way, he had heaps of time to play. The youngest of them all finished his house in one day. He yelled out to the other piglets, Hey you guys, I'm already finished! The eldest piglet had a look at the house. Okay, but this house doesn't look steady at all. How will we protect ourselves from the wolf? The youngest piglet didn't take any notice of his brother. Don't worry, nothing will happen. Okay, don't say I didn't warn you. The middle piglet decided to make his house out of wood. From the branches he had collected in the woods, he decided to build a little cubby house. His house took exactly three days to finish. This house was a bit more steady than the one with straw. The eldest piglet walked over towards him. Uh, my dear brother, you've done a great job, but this doesn't look safe at all. Is this house going to protect us from the wolf? The middle piglet answered. Don't you worry, this house is very safe. Okay. Don't say I didn't want you! While the two little piglets were having a great time in their newly built homes, the eldest of them all was constantly working because he was building a home from bricks and rocks. The other piglets thought that his effort was useless. All they did was play around and kill time. Why would you bother with this when you can quickly finish like we have? Hey, how scared is he? The eldest piglet didn't bother listening to them. He worked for one whole week and managed to finish his house made out of bricks and rocks. A day later, a hungry wolf arrived near their home. He first stood in front of the house made of straw. The little piglet was resting in his house made of straw. The wolf knocked on the door. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. And so the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew his house in. But with great effort, the little piglet managed to get away. And off he ran over to his brother's house made from tree branches. He knocked on the door and when the middle piglet opened the door, the little piglet threw himself inside the house. Hey, close the door, the wolf can come in here. Don't worry, he can't do anything to us in this house. After a while, the wolf came by the second piglet's wooden house and yelled inside. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't blow my house in! And so the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew his house in. 
and brought it down. Both piglets ran to the third piglet's house and barely got away from the wolf. Brother, the wolf is going this way. What are we going to do? The oldest piglet answered very sure of himself. Uh, don't worry, uh, the wolf cannot come in this house. A little later, the starving wolf came by the third piglet's house of bricks and stone and yelled to the three piglets. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. Don't you even try, you bad wolf. You cannot come in this house. The wolf got very angry. He huffed and puffed, but nothing happened. He could not bring his house down. He tried and tried, but he couldn't move one single brick. Finally, being exhausted, the wolf decided to try another way to go in. He saw the chimney up on the roof and started to climb. Realising that the wolf was going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney, the piglet quickly lit up the fireplace right under the chimney and put a big bucket of water on the wood. The wolf barely climbed up the chimney and threw himself in and went straight into the boiling bucket. Oh, help! Help! I'm burning! Save me! Oh, help! Finally, being free from the wolf, the piglets hugged each other with joy. The three piglets went to their mother's house the next day to tell her all that had happened. The youngest one came next to his mother. You were right, Mummy. Whatever we did in this world, we have done it to our best. If you really work for something, it will be a success. From that day on, the two piglets were never lazy. They worked hard like their big brother and lived a happy and safe life. On a little farm lived a cute duck family. Mummy duck was sitting on her eggs waiting for her new ducklings to hatch. There were exactly seven eggs that were waiting to hatch. One sunny morning the eggs began to hatch. Soon after with great joy the six little ducklings began to hatch. The ducklings were trying to adapt to the new world. They were quacking and walking around Mother Duck. However, the largest egg of them all was still trying to hatch and Mother Duck began to worry. She thought that there might be something wrong. She decided to wait a little while longer. And at last, the seventh and the largest egg hatched. With great confusion, the poor ducklings began to look around. Little did he know his mother and siblings were a bit more confused than he was. Because this duck, in particular, did not look like his siblings. He was built much more broader and had grey and white feathers. The other ducklings began to laugh at him. What an ugly duckling you are! You look nothing like us! I don't get it. How come you look nothing like your siblings? Some time later, the ducklings all grew older. But the ugly duckling was much bigger than the others, even the colour of his feathers. You grew up so fast. How did you turn out to be so different? Time was passing by and the ugly duckling was growing up to be a different and sad duck. None of his siblings wanted to play with him. 
We won't play with you because you're ugly. All the other animals on the farm were making fun of him. <coughs> ugly duckling, ugly duckling. Na 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 na, ugly duckling, ugly duckling. Mother duck, on the other hand, was doing her best in protecting him. My poor duckling, why are you so different than the others? As the days passed, the poor ugly duckling was feeling. Horrible! All night long, he would silently cry and think to himself that no one would ever want him. <coughs> Why am I so ugly? Why couldn't I turn out to be like my siblings? One day, some hunters approached the lake near where they lived. The hunters began to hunt the ducks they had seen. Whilst Mother Duck was looking for food for the ducklings, she was caught by the hunters. The poor duckling, not knowing what had been happening, he waited till morning for his mother to return. Poor duckling didn't know what to do. First, he went next to the dog, and the dog told him to go. Go away! No one should see me talking to an ugly duck like you. A while later, he went next to the chicken, but the chicken also made fun of him. Even I'm better looking than you. <coughs> ugly duckling was very sad. No one wants me here. If my mother isn't coming back, there's absolutely no reason for me to stay on this farm. That morning, the ugly duckling left the farm. He swam to the other side of the lake. He asked the same question to all the animals he bumped into along the way. Do you know of any duck that looks like me? Do you know of any ducks that look like me? Do you know of any ducks that look like me? He received the same answer from all of them. They had never seen such ugly duck before. Poor duckling began his journey and reached another lake once he was there. He asked the same question to the geese. You mustn't stay here like this. There are hunters around. Quickly get away from here. Go on, now go. The ugly duckling began to move along. Soon after another lake appeared. This time he was all alone. There was no one to be seen. Well then, if nobody wants me, I will hide here forever. Even though he was all alone, he was very happy. One day, he saw a horde of white long-necked birds migrating to the south. He looked at them with admiration. How beautiful they are! I wish I could be like them! Winter had come and snow had begun to fall. The ugly duckling fell in love with the sight of his first ever snow. Playing around, he was covered in white snow. Due to the heavy snow, the ugly duckling was finding it hard to find food. So off he went walking around trying to find food. He was cold and tired. Meanwhile, he came across a farmer. The farmer felt sorry for him and gave his jacket. You poor thing, how cold you are. I will take you home and look after you until you grow. The farmer did as he said and took good care of him. When spring had arrived, the ugly duckling had grown. So that he would have free space to move around, the farmer decided to leave him in a lake. 
all alone once again. After some time had passed, the ugly duckling looked at his reflection in the water. But he was amazed at what he saw. At first, he couldn't recognize himself. He thought there was someone else behind him. So he flipped his wings and noticed that his reflection was doing the same thing. He stretched out his neck and his reflection continued to copy his movements. Right then he knew that this amazing bird was no one other than himself. Oh, how much I've changed. I look like the birds in the sky. I must return back home and show myself at once. And off he went. While he was swimming in the lake, he came across a wedge of swans. Because he was one of them now, they took him along. Ugly Duckling was travelling in joy with the swans. A boy at the lake shore yelled out to his friends when he saw the swans. Hey, look at the young one! All the way back! Must be the most beautiful swan I've seen! Yes, from the beginning, he indeed was a swan. He was just an unfortunate egg which got mixed up in between the ducks. But now he was with his real family and ahead of him was a happy life. Disa Baba Fairy Tales and Bedtime Stories for Kids The Stubborn Baby Elephant In a land far away, there lived a family of elephants in a forest. The youngest member of this family was a very stubborn and naughty baby elephant. One day, when his parents were going for a walk, they yelled after him. Darling, where are you? Come on, we're going for a walk. Where are you, son? Come on. In a short while, the baby elephant came next to them. He felt no need to go for a walk with them. I don't want to come with you. It's boring. Your siblings are so excited to come. Why are you like this? Well, they can go. We always do the same things, and being an elephant is so boring. Mama and Papa Elephant were very surprised by the last words of their baby, but did not want to show it. Hmm, alrighty then. As you wish. Don't move from here, we'll be back before dark. Sure, as always. His family left the little stubborn elephant alone and went away. The baby elephant played on his own for a while. But soon after, he began to get bored. The more bored he was, the more mad he had become. I don't want to be an elephant anymore. It's bad to be an elephant. I wonder what I should be. Right that moment, he noticed a jumping and hopping gazelle. And so he made up his mind. Yeah, yeah, I should be a gazelle, fast and agile. The baby elephant tried to copy the gazelle and jumped around. But his big and lumpy feet got tangled and he fell down. Head first. And of course, it hurt a little. It's not fun being a gazelle. The baby elephant began to go further into the forest. He came amongst the tree where the monkeys were playing. They were jumping from one branch to another, having so much fun together. So he thought to himself, The monkeys have so much fun. I should be a monkey. So he yelled out to the monkeys. 
Hey, monkeys! Look at me! I'm also a monkey! Play with me too! The monkeys stopped for a little while and looked at the baby elephant. And then they all went down from the tree and surrounded him. One jumped on him, one pulled his ear, one hung on his trunk, and the last one threw a coconut on his head. Baby elephant was stunned and he couldn't run away jumping to a branch like the monkeys. They really hurt him. He could not play with the monkeys. Finally, he got rid of them with his trunk and ran away as fast as he could. The baby elephant began to move further into the forest. This time round, he saw a squirrel on a tree. The squirrel plucked a chestnut from the branch and went back into his burrow. What a cute animal! Because he's small, he can get in and out of everywhere. Yes, I should be a squirrel! The baby elephant tried to climb up the tree and of course failed. So he poked his trunk into the burrow. The poor little squirrel was so frightened that it jumped out as fast as it could. The baby elephant tried to put his head into the burrow this time, but his head got stuck. It was very hard for him to take it out. I'm just not fit to be a squirrel. The trees are too small. The baby elephant was now too far from home. A little further, he came across a beautiful parrot. The parrot was flying from one tree to another. The baby elephant enjoyed watching this. He came closer. I want to be a parrot too. Can you teach me to fly? Of course I can! Together, they went to a high cliff next to a lake. Now watch me and see how I fly. The parrot opened his wings and jumped. He was gliding in the sky. The baby elephant copied him and went down the cliff. As the parrot flew with his wings, the baby elephant fell down from thin air and landed in the lake. Thankfully, he managed to get out and make it to the shore. He was covered in mud and his whole body was in pain. The parrot flew next to him. You should stay being an elephant, my friend. Right at that moment, a baby bird sitting on the cliff fell out of its nest and disappeared in the lake. In a panic, Mother Bird flew next to her baby where it had disappeared. She was flying above the water and yelling. Help! Somebody help! Save my baby! Help! Baby elephant went in the water that instant, put his trunk in and began to search for the baby bird. After a few seconds went past, he took his trunk out and the baby bird was right there, on the tip of his trunk. She's alive! She's alive! The baby elephant carefully put the baby bird down by the lake. Mother bird flew and came next to them. Thank God you were here! If it weren't for you, she would have drowned! Hearing these words, the elephant was very happy. He felt worthy. If I weren't an elephant, I couldn't save this baby bird, he thought. I think I'm meant to stay as an elephant. It was almost night time. The elephant was very far from home now. He was super impatient about this. On his way back, he saw the parrot flying in the sky, the squirrel taking his head out of the burrow, the monkey swinging from one branch to another, and the very fast gazelle that ran past him. But he thought of nothing other than how much he had missed his family, and how much he made them upset with his silly stubbornness. All he wanted to do now was to apologise.